Please send your questions, comments, conundrums, snarks to idea mm -hmm. at wretched.org. If you are a pagan ixnay on the airing sway, please try to keep it pithy and include your name. That would be really, really kind. Let's get to the mailbag, uh, shall we? From a Tony, idea for show. Irreverence in the sanctuary. Not just coffee, but worse than that. Sorry. Uh, surfing the net, reading emails, eating, adults putting feet on chairs, dressing <laughs> like they're mowing the lawn, kids horsing around, and the adults don't care. How do we behave in the sanctuary? Gotta ask a question. What are we doing when we assemble on Sunday morning? I would suggest to you that it is the highlight of the church calendar. For the week, there is nothing more important that will happen in whatever building you assemble in than the assembling of the saints for formal worship of the Creator of heaven and earth. Should that not cause us to put a little bit of thought into this? Is there any value in what is a recent trend of kind of casual? We bring beverages in, we're chatting, we're having a good time, and then we get called to worship. I would suggest to you, I get the motive behind that. There's some fellowship that's happening. We get to love on one another. I see the benefit in that, but might I suggest, biblically informed, there is a benefit in being reverential, silent, and even formal. Hey, don't you go make it a law where there is no law. I grant you can't do that, and I won't do that as much as I'm inclined to because it's my preference, but I believe we can look in the Old Testament to learn some principles that we carry forward into the New Testament because we're not Jews living in Israel with a tabernacle or temple system. We don't have those formal priests, intercessors between God and man, the sacrificial system, the Levitical laws. All of that is gone, but I do believe we can learn some principles that we can carry forward to apply to our assembling of the saints on Sunday morning. Let me begin by asking you, a question. Do you like it when I do that? Just kind of not really plugged in to you? Get distracted, drinking the coffee, acting like this isn't a big deal. I suggest you're probably like, dude, can I get plugged into this thing? And I believe that we're supposed to be plugged into that thing that we're doing on Sunday morning. And it's kind of hard to do that when we got coffee being slurped, the kids are running around, lots of noises going on. We're assembling to worship Almighty God at the get-go. There we are, it's Sunday morning and lots of activity and we're having fun and I'm not saying it's sinful and it's very casual and there's a lot of noise going on and there's a lot of drinking of coffee and it's, all right, let's worship. A little hard to get it in gear, but when we maybe enter into God's sanctuary with reverence, God is in his holy temple, let the earth be silent, that would be time for us to prepare our hearts for worship so that at the get-go, when the gun fires at the call to worship, our hearts are actually prepared. Those are the two verses that I would run to in the Old Testament. Leviticus 19, celebrating God's Sabbath, entering into his sanctuary with reverence, not casual, but reverential that we realize what we're doing here is something big, it's something important. This is the most important event of the church calendar week. This is the most important hour or 90 minutes or, well, if you're Lutheran, about 40, 42 minutes long. This is the most important time I'm gonna spend all week. I get to assemble with others to worship God. Shouldn't we do that reverentially? Shouldn't we be preparing ourselves for that? Here it comes. But when I was a kid, if you talked in church before the service began, whew, did you ever get the scowl? My impression of what it was like to go into the sanctuary before the service started and you started chatting or even just whispering too loud. This, 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 this is what you get. You just didn't do that. You were quiet. 
you are preparing and it sent a message. There's a big difference when you walk into a room and everybody's quiet, nobody's talking, or perhaps they've got their heads down and they're reading the bulletin for what verses are going to be read, what hymns are going to be sung, and they're studying things. They're doing something that's kind of special here. Doesn't that say something to everybody who's entering into the temple? Doesn't that say that what we're about to do is really important? Let the earth be silent. We prepare our hearts and then when the service begins we're ready to go and we do it reverentially. Not everybody slurping drinks, being distracted, more concerned about their caffeine intake and with the kids running around, whoa, what are we telling the kids? We're saying this isn't important, this isn't a big deal. We put our feet up on the furniture. How do you like it when somebody does that in your home? It's like, hey, I'm trying to talk to you here. Try doing that with your kids. I bet you wouldn't put up with it. You call your child in to a room because you've got something serious to discuss with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they so, put their feet up on the hey, 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 plug in here. This is important. I think God might be saying to us, hey, 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 plug in here. This is kind of important. Imagine you're at a funeral and you got there maybe on time, pretty early, and you're with a group of people who are mourning and you are around the casket of the deceased person. There is a sobriety. There's a somber attitude. And what do you hear? out in the lobby, hey, 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 Jim, Bob, what do you got going on? <laughs> All kinds of racket and cacophony going on because somebody, they're just kind of having a good time and then they walk into the room and then they're suddenly reverential. You kind of feel jarred by that. There's a sense of, hey, um, when you're entering in, this is kind of an appropriate time to, mm, and be reverential. Similarly, I would suggest to you that maybe, just maybe, without making a law where there is no law, you and I reconsider our attitude when we enter into the sanctuary, how we conduct the service, how we even present ourselves, because while we're not the Old Testament saints in the tabernacle system, I believe the verses of entering into God's tabernacle with reverence and the earth being silent because God is in his sanctuary could have some implications for us. Hey, I'm Todd. I'm going to be your Uber driver. What's your destination? Uh, 2054 Kempel Lane. No, 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 no. Your eternal destination. The liberals, they brought in Pelagianism, it's the old Sabellian heresy, denying the Trinitarian Godhead. Three persons, one God, not to the Sabellians, no. They would say that it's actually just one God. Please, somebody,